Welcome back to part two. Um, I'm dubbing this over because the audio was really terrible. Um, that is the thermostatic valve. Um, that's where we had our previous leak, which has been fixed. It's just a little washer. Um, also on the board, you can see the emergency release valve. Well, it lets water out of there if it gets too high pressure or too hot. Um, yeah, that top rail is the flow, so the warm water uh, goes out to the radiators through there and there's thrub flow regulators for each radiator on the top. Uh, following that, also on the board, you've got pressure gauge, so I can see what pressure the water's in the system. You can also see the diesel heater there at the bottom that we repaired on the last diesel heater video. Um, nine kilowatt uh, airburst pressure, I'm gonna say. Probably, probably wrong. On the top of the flow rail, you can use these um, meters to regulate the flow to each radiator so you can balance it all from one central point, which is quite useful. So you don't have to run around the house doing all the balancing. You can see on the right of the board the heat exchanger, and on the left there with the white cable coming out is the pump. Um, on each flow and return, there's a thermostat as well, which you can just see under my wrist there um, lets you know the temperature of the outgoing and the returning flow. Both valves are now open. So I'm gonna seems okay so far. Right, let's go down and repressurize it. Nope, seems alright. Oh hold on. Where is that coming from? From this top join. And this radiator is now up to operating pressure of full 1.5 bar, so we can isolate this and move on to the next one. What do you think, Rosie? It's all good? Fill one, isolate it, fill another, check for leaks, isolate it, go on, carry on like that. So I've got 10 radiators to do, or well nine, so that's what I shall do. And then once it's all up to pressure, then we'll think about connecting the pump. <clears throat> right, morning, today's the day, maybe. So I'll just recap what I did yesterday. Uh, we pressurized all this, connected in, uh, um, mains water in um, use the outside tap feed for that pressure I was using this found the leak here which has since been solved and I actually found last night uh, after filming there was a leak on here it, it seems like it's an old one because there's a bit of rust there anyway but I've tightened that up and that appears to be fine uh, only really small ones anyway. Then I went round and opened each radiator individually, went up, checked for leaks, came down, repressurized, so on and so forth, <clears throat> leading to the situation we're in now where 
we are one and a half bars and we are literally exactly as I left it last night. All radiator valves are open. I've checked all the radiators upstairs, no leaks. So really, we're ready to go with the circulation side. So the first thing we need to do is, <clears throat> I didn't even test this pump. So we roll, uh, we need to plug this in or do something, get this working and see if we can get flow through all the radiators. Then mount all that electronics somewhere out the way of the water and fire it up. So today could be the day where I actually have central heating. 2nd of January, Sunday. So what I've done is I've put a, a British plug on with a three amp fuse and the reason for that is in France the plugs aren't fused. So if anything went wrong like the pump jammed or whatever there was a fault on it, it would blow the electrics and all the lights would go out. So if I put a 3 amp fuse in here, it should be enough for that. Just put an adapter in and then off we go. So there's three things that could happen. Uh, nothing. And the fuse blows and that's the end of that. The pump turns on and nothing happens, in which case it will need bleeding. And I think that's probably quite likely. Although, the way it's set up it should be okay. Or it goes and then all we have to do is just adjust the flow rates and we can move on to getting the heat source done. I'm going to do it in the style of Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Ready? Like I said, nothing. Right, so there's power there, just doesn't... Wonder if it's The world's cheapest adapter. Gotta be. Gotta be. Okay. I'm sure this will work now. Certain. You ready? Yes. So far, so good. We have exploded in balls of flames. Let's just bleed this pump. There's so much air in it, we need to get rid of that first. So once the air's all out, the pump's running, we can balance these uh, radiators up. Interesting. <laughs> Right, so we've sealed off the air from getting back in, uh, hopefully. Um, this is insulated against the heat of the exhaust anyway. Um, inside there is special fibre insulation for exhausts. And I'll close that one as well, we took that pipe out. So that's it, the exhaust outside, happy with that. Uh, less happy with this, but it's rusty old metal isn't it? We'll only see once we set it going. Fortunately I've got a carbon monoxide detector. So let's pop this back on. Like that. And then we need um, to connect up now. That's the electrics. So we need the flow and return connecting up now to our heat exchanger. So I've using, I'm using these. For uh, connection, because hopefully I'll be able to get those over the top of that. 
uh, but we need an expansion tank because although this side of it is all pressurized let's connect this up but let's find a header tank <clears throat> okay right i think i've meet, reached peak mad scientist now this is just crazy anyway i'll talk you through it so we've got our two batteries giving us 24 volts as per the last video some diesel pump for the diesel wiring for this and then we've got our diesel heater down there which feeds this heat exchanger we've got expansion tank and the water level is about there on off switch for the heater and the exhaust goes out there um, i sealed everything in as much as i can so then the diesel comes out there into this which heats the water through this side of the heat exchanger which is then exchanged to this side to the thermostatic valve which then feeds the pump which then feeds all the radiators now we set this up and every radiator is getting one litre a minute all switched on all ready to go um, we've got a temperature monitor here on each about 15 degrees I've just checked all the radiators upstairs and they're all 15 degrees we're at one and a half bar we've got a pressure release valve just in case um, we also have the emergency situation if anything goes really wrong or a pipe blows off hit the push off okay so I've got the infrared camera there catches up to here which is fine and nothing really to do now other than see what happens right the diesel what do you call it pump is on as before but it'll be a failed start I know because uh, you know I just want to check no fuel leak Ah, no. Not much I can do about it now. <laughs> Has it heated up? Uh, the there's air in there which tried to force its way out it's probably air from in here which forced the water out of there I can't believe it <laughs> it's actually working it's actually working this is the craziest thing 25 degrees on the out No smoke. Let me do a quick detection. Oh. Zero, zero monoxide. Do that. I'll recheck that later. Up to thirty degrees now on the flow. You can see that's the exhaust going out. You can see the heat exchanger. So you can see here, yeah, flow, return, flow, return, flow, which is cool. So all the flow pipes there are warm on the top row, and the bottom row is starting to get warmer, but still 20 degrees or so. Yeah, look, this one. So the dark ones are the returns, the, the flows are behind. It's 
so that's pretty cool. So yeah, you can follow the track of the pipes. You can see the pipes, hopefully, there look. Come across here. Sending that lovely warmth to my radiators. Look at these. Look at these beauties. Yeah. So you can see with this the returns are starting to get warm, which is good. It's like the Ghostbusters, isn't it? I guess we need to go and look at some radiators. Okay, because it's doing the whole house, we want to see if we've got more than 15 degrees down here. Yes. Brilliant. Now, let's see. This will be the test. 18. 19 and a half, so it's nearly 20. That's good. That's slowing down. That's super hot. Yeah, our flow is still the same. So it's just mixing a very little bit of this to cool down what comes out of there. So therefore it doesn't need it as much. So now, just it's literally done a litre of diesel in this run up. So let's see, it's five o'clock. We started it at three o'clock, shall we say? Two hours. So it's 0.5 litres an hour. Which is about what the manual says, actually. So, yeah, that's it for this video. Um, obviously, this continues and on to the third part, which will be various other things like how to keep the batteries charged, storing fuel, um, turning the pump on, turning the heater on, all that kind of stuff. So really, that's it. But thanks for watching. I hope you find it interesting. I certainly did. It's an awful lot of work. Um, I'll keep filming and you'll see everything on the next one. Oh, 11.13 the next day. <laughs> it didn't start. And it didn't start for one very good reason. I don't, I don't know if to tell you this or not. So this might not come out. But I got...